folks, um, first of all, um, I got to apologize. I don't take a lot of pictures with um, white people, unfortunately, and um, I, I need to do more of that. So anyway, uh, I've made a couple of adjustments. So when you're looking at uh, some of these uh, videos, uh, the color is uh, more natural. Um, I hope that... Um, I hope that uh, you uh, will notice that um, somebody had made mention of how washed out uh, Donald Trump appears at times, as well as other white people, but the, the black people appear to be natural. And I guess because I'm black and I basically do videos, you know, home videos, etc., of my people. That's how my camera was set. Anyway, I just adjusted it, um, and I'm going to try to maintain this adjustment going forward. That being said, um, there is a major uh, game plan uh, going on here. And the linchpin is going to be provided by the nomination and confirmation of Mr. Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. This guy is going to be the first step in making sure that unless you're 30 years old or younger, you will not see a conservative, I should say, more conservative court than you have now. As a matter of fact, any hint of progressiveness or liberalism as far as social issues are concerned is going to go by the boards for more than likely the next 25 to 30 years. Why do I say that? Well, I'm going to save that for later. First, let's talk about Mr. Neil Gorsuch. If you are unaware, Mr. Gorsuch's family has a history uh, with the government. Specifically, Mr. Gorsuch's mother, and let's see, what's, what's her name? Um, I forget her name, but anyway, Mr. Gorsuch's mother was uh, named as the head of the EPA by President Reagan. And she proceeded uh, to destroy the EPA. And when uh, she finally stepped down in disgrace, just to let you know where Reagan was, he found a spot for her on uh, another uh, panel, I, and I forget which one, but he found a, a, another spot for her. So he took care of her because uh, she took care of him. Okay, so anyway, that, that being said, uh, Mr. Gorsuch, uh, when he was a kid, while his mother was in the uh, Reagan administration, he served as a page in Congress. And one of his classmates, surprisingly enough, was Amy Carter. So I thought a bit of uh, jivality would not uh, would not hurt. All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, discuss uh, Mr. Gorsuch. He's 49 years old. He's out of the state of Colorado. He has been given the blessing by those conservative think tanks such as the Federalist Society and the Heritage Foundation. So right then and there, their blessing, in my opinion, means problems. Conservatives love this guy, and in particular, his opinions on religious liberty. If you're unaware, he was the one who sided with closely held corporations who argued that contraceptive mandate in 
the ACA violated their religious beliefs. He found four of those corporations. In another opinion, he challenged the notion that courts should defer to administrative agencies when they interpret the law, i.e., he does not feel that the agencies know what they're talking about when they take actions that uh, they have mandates for. So when they were sued, uh, he basically uh, sided against the uh, various government agencies that came before him and for anybody that was suing him, them. This guy is further right than Clarence Thomas, and that is saying a lot. Mr. Uh, Gorsuch, I'm having problems with his name, Gorsuch, is a disciple of Anthony Kennedy, and Anthony Kennedy is the swing vote that is currently on the Supreme Court. And he's also a protege of uh, Justice Kennedy. But surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly, this guy was a lover of Justice Antonin Scalia. So for him to be picked as Mr. Scalia's successor uh, begs Krupp credulity, credulity, I'm sorry with that, um, because if they are replacing this guy, I'm sorry, using this guy to replace Scalia, they probably couldn't have gotten a much better candidate other than the candidate that they had out of Alabama that Jeff Sessions was pushing. And God knows that guy was even, that guy was basically in the, oh, alt-right white supremacist camp, just to be honest about it. Okay. I consider Gorsuch an extreme candidate. And this guy has never been on the side of uh, women's rights as far as uh, reproductive health is concerned, or the rights of workers and consumers. And his decisions or voting record basically indicates that. Now, he's noted to be less salty than Antonin Scalia and tends to use persuasion uh, in dealing with the other justices that were on the uh, Court of Appeals that he served on. He's also noted to be an absolutely fabulous uh, writer as far as opinions are concerned. And even the people on the other side of the political spectrum recognize that ability. Now you have some conservative groups that I guess are going to fall in line and give him, I guess, a thumbs up. Now. A couple of important things. He is not going to be able to be attacked on Roe v. Wade because he has never had a case where Roe v. Wade was involved. So that when he is questioned in front of the Judiciary Committee, they are not really going to have anything to hang their hats on as far as him being pro-life or pro-choice. As far as his decisions are concerned, but his verbal opinions are definitely in with the right as far as uh, pro-life is concerned. And the various uh, Christian groups are back in this guy. So, I'm assuming that they know more about this guy and his positions on something that is important to them than uh, we do. Now, the Democrats are going to try to uh, filibuster this guy. And 
and they are going to be unsuccessful as indicated today by Ted Cruz, who said that Mr. Gorsuch is going to be approved one way or the other. Now, currently the rule for the approval of Supreme Court justices is that they need 60 votes. The Republicans have 52 votes in the Senate, Republic, uh, the Democrats obviously 48. So they need eight votes. Now there is the potential of them getting four because there are eight Democratic senators that uh, reside in red states. But four of those eight, although residing in currently red states, have enough backing, I believe, in order to withstand any criticism from voting against this guy. So that only gets them the 56. In order to get to the 60, Obviously, they'd have to persuade four more Democrats, and they're not going to be able to do that. So, since they have said that they're going to get this guy confirmed one way or the other, the only other option is the nuclear one, where they change the rules and call for a simple majority in order to confirm a Supreme Court justice. Now, Mitch McConnell has always said that he's one for regular order, and it was true that Harry Reid declared the nuclear option in order to get lower court judges confirmed and other uh, nominees uh, by the Obama administration because the Republicans were filibustering everything under the sun, and even though there was supposedly an agreement not to filibuster all these people that Obama had uh, nominated, the Republicans obviously didn't uh, stick to that promise. And uh, McConnell, I guess, didn't have the power to control uh, the people on the Republican side. But Harry Reid left in place the uh, filibuster rule for Supreme Court justices. Well, Mitch McConnell, who swears that uh, he is for regular order, is going to bite the bullet, and he is going to declare the nuclear option, and this guy is going to get confirmed with 52 votes. Okay? I said that his confirmation would be the linchpin. What did I mean by that? His confirmation will bring the court back to 4-4 with Kennedy being the swing vote and he is on the conservative side, though he has sided quite a few times with the uh, progressive side of the court. So let's just say that it's still 4-4. Uh, well, there's thinking that Justice Kennedy will feel comfortable in uh, retiring from the Supreme Court. Now, I think he's somewhere around either 75 or 78. I'm not really sure. But the thinking is because his protege is now coming onto the court that he would be comfortable in retiring. So the court would immediately go from 4-4 plus a swing with the retirement of Anthony Kennedy to 5-4, no swing, with a conservative justice being named by President Trump. But folks, it gets worse. You have two Supreme Court justices that are in their 80s. That's uh, Justice Breyer and Justice Ginsburg. Justice Breyer is a progressive, as is Justice Ginsburg. If those two people do not hang on until the Senate turns over or until the president's office turns over, you will go from a 5-4 majority to a at least 6-3 and more than likely a 7-2 majority for the conservative side of the court. Now, the Republicans are smart. 
I stated earlier that this guy is 49 years old. If he goes until he is 80, that is 39 years. And I had mentioned that uh, anybody under 30, I should say anybody over 30, will not see a shift in the Supreme Court from conservative to moderate or even progressive more than likely in their projected lifetimes. I know I won't see one. Clarence Thomas is, I believe, in his early 60s. And he was uh, the youngest Supreme Court justice elected. And he's been around for what? About 15, I want to say 15, 20 years. And he's still got another 15 to go. Um, at that point, you would basically have uh, John Roberts and he's a young guy. You're going to have uh, all of the uh, Republicans that are put into place. And folks, they are smart. They do not nominate and confirm a Supreme Court justice if he's a conservative, if the guy is less than, I'm sorry, if the guy is more than 55 years old. And they like to do uh, people that are in their late 40s to early 50s. The two candidates for this particular position were obviously Mr. Gorsuch, who was 49, and the other gentleman, and I, I, I'm at a blank for his name, he was 51. So they're looking to get 30 years at a crack out of their Supreme Court justices. If you count the four that are potentially going to uh, be there, I, let me back up. If you count the four that have the possibility of coming on to the court, that's four conservatives, uh, say, figure average of 30 years. You count Roberts, okay, who's in his 60s. That's uh, 20 years for him. And you count Thomas, uh, and there's another figure 15, 20 years for him. That's six. And I think I'm missing one, but I could be wrong. It could be... Um, it's going to swing to a 6-3. Folks, that court is not going to do a damn thing to fight any conservative or Republican president in the foreseeable future unless it's so blatant uh, that uh, they have no choice. So there you have it. The game plan for the Republicans if everything breaks the way that they want it to, again, this guy being confirmed, Kennedy retiring, Ginsburg and Breyer retiring, that's four young conservative Supreme Court justices, and then you throw in uh, Roberts, and you throw in Thomas, and you now have the recipe for nothing progressive being done on the social side of our issues for the next uh, 15, 20, 30 years.